Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Meditation Town Hall with Lana Surya Das. If you live in an area with daylight savings time, congratulations on having made the transition. May all your transitions be as smooth. One week from today is the beginning of the residential retreat in beautiful Sarah Retreat Center in California. If you have not yet registered, you have until Wednesday to register for that. Because of the retreat, there will be no meditation town hall next Sunday. If you can't make the retreat in person, we have a deal for you. There is the virtual retreat where you will get every day as Lama gives his karma talk of the day, you will have access to it live. And then also you will have access to the video one month after that. And finally, the next master class. This is the final master class in this year's series. So it's the last one until a new series starts in September. It's about the Kayas, intermingled awakefulness of our Buddha bodies. So feel free to register for that. I have to say that yesterday's master class with Lana Surya was superb is the way I would describe it. And you're missing a lot if you if you want to get deeper and miss out on those. Having said all that, we'll now ask Lama Surya to take it from here. Okay, Mel, thank you. And Menla and everybody, nice to see you all on this Sunday, day of rest. It's Mother's Day in the UK. <clears throat> Always a good thing to remember and honor. In fact, <clears throat> if you're familiar with traditional Tibetan Buddhism, many of the prayers and practices at the end it's dedicated to, or we thank, or we share the merits and blessings, good karma with what is translated as all mother sentient beings or all motherly sentient beings. The thinking be that we all have mothers, even orphans had a mother, and she went through to give life. They helped us survive, introduced us to the world, did so much for us, loved us unconditionally. Now, in modern times, since people, some say they have issues with their mothers, so sometimes I like to translate it as all grandmotherly sentient beings, but you could figure all this out, you smart people. Um, translations also have to be translated into the modern idiom. So as I was saying yesterday, when I translate one of the Lojung mind training slogans of Atisha, don't shift the load of the ox onto the zo. You have to translate it as don't pass the buck. Who knows what a zo is? Anyway, it's a female yak, but it means don't pass the buck. In fact, in the Bodhisattva practice, we practice taking on the burdens and difficulties with the biggest share of the work or the responsibility or the giving even. So these are very important um, thoughts or practices to refine our attitude, lojung, mind training, attitude transformation, spiritual refinement, character development, becoming a mensch, training in unselfishness even. So this is a great practice, and the practice of Tonglen, that's a big part of it, which we went into a lot yesterday. Tonglen, giving and receiving, sending and taking, mutual reciprocity, exchanging oneself and others, equalizing self and others, seeing through the other's eyes, Tonglen. <sighs> so now, it being Mother's Day, let's have a moment of deep reverence and silence for all the mothers of this world and planet, not just human mothers. 
who go through the labors before and after the birth to innumerable dimension. There's a Tibetan saying that at the time of birth, mother and child both go halfway to the other side, meaning death and back. So it's a hairy Bardo passage, challenging, mysterious, stressful, as well as joyful, so beautiful dangerous. It's a moment of silence for all the mothers and what they've gone through, as well as all those at war today, or starving in refugee camps and other beleaguered places, Gaza, Bosnia, East Africa, and so forth, including all in our prayers and practice today. Opening the wings of our heart, elevating our gaze and our scope, including all in our practice today. <clears throat> Dedicated to all motherly sentient beings, great motherly sentient beings. As the tradition says, who have been our mothers and fathers as siblings and lovers and children and mates through so many rounds of lifetimes. <sighs> Love to one and all. Love is the way, the truth and the light, the life. And praying to Machi Labdran, the sole founder, female matriarch, head of a ancient tradition of practice lineage, the Chud lineage of Prajnaparamita wisdom, Machi, who lived 700 years ago, approximately, or 800 years ago in Tibet. <coughs> Machi the single mother, the sole mother, the singularity, the oneness, the womb of all the Buddhas, Prajnaparamita, mother of enlightenment. <clears throat> Om Ma Chigmahala Hung hung ma chig ma la ha so wa de heb ka po me shing lo ma po wa i shing lo nam pa hung i shing lo pa ku su hun tu ni chen chen po my young young god, but so may it swiftly be accomplished without obstacles. Oh, marching, Mati, we pray. Ah, marching, Mati, we pray. Hung, marching, Mati, we pray. Empower us through the white om from your forehead into mine. Empower us through the blue ah. Empower us through the blue. <laughs> Through the red hung, why not? Transmit to me your enlightened body, speech and mind, heart and soul, energy. May I attain, may we attain your realization of Prajna Paramita, imminent gnosis, transcendental wisdom. Prajna 
Paramita, the panacea and wisdom that delivers us all to the other shore, as it says in the traditional texts, from samsara here to nirvana there, or Dzogchen, from here to totally and completely here and now, the pure land of Dzogchen, Kuntasampo's pure land of nowness, awareness, to here and now, the mind of the great perfection. Imho. Ah, just sitting, just breathing, just being present, attentive, awareful. Awareness is a verb, awareing, mindfully, presenting. Awareness and mindfulness sound so mental, so anthropocentric, so human centric. How about just presencing, being in the presence? Cultivating incandescent, lucid presence. Empty, infinite, open, lucid cognizance. Presencing. Following the breath, riding the breath out. Attending to the breath, observing the breath, and riding it in. Writing the breath, beginning the basics of tone and practice, good for concentration, good for relaxation, and inspiration with the inhalation, inspiring and expiring, breathing out with exhalation. Being born and dying to each moment afresh. Letting go of the baggage train, all those cars, those railroad cars behind you, of excess baggage, your story, your narrative, your history, perhaps your miserable childhood, or some other narrative, let's say. Letting go of goals. For the moment in this meditation, letting go of goals, directions, as we say in Mahamudra and Zongchen, aimless, goalless, without reference points, yet always already complete and perfect as it is. Example. Relax into just being as you already are. Are already. This breath only breath, this moment only moment. Kuntasampo. Rest on your Buddha seat, friends. Assume your Buddha seat. Who do you think you're not? Just sitting, just breathing, just being, as you already are, you don't have to do it. Just breathing, as you already are, you don't have to do it. Who's breathing you? Who's thinking your thoughts? Are you really producing them? Let go and let Buddha do it all, as the theists say. Let go and let God, let go and let the Tao flow. You don't have to get into the flow, Joe. It's already flowing from, through you right now. As it is said, Imaho, Eureka, Hallelujah, Swaha, Amen. Marvelous, miraculous, magical, dreamlike. Let's make it a good dream rather than a nightmare. No. Let the my tree loving kindness includes friendliness, openness. No. Open to all experience, to the experience of this moment, here and now. The best show, the only show in town. 
you know, grandfathered in, grandmothered in, granddothered in. Congratulations. With Dzogchen, just remember this, you can't miss. Just breathing out, letting go, unclenching, decontracting, releasing. You're allowed to breathe in, but focus a little more on the out breath, the metaphor for releasing, letting go, and letting be. A little relinquishment, a little death of each out breath. Oh, how sweet it is. Oh, sit, we'll get off this dot, this spot. Ah, oh, what a relief to just sit. To just be. Not even a being for the moment. Not my parents' son, not gender, nationality, age, size, personality type. Not a separate being, just being, beingness, business, tatata, tatagata garba, dharmata, the dharma nature itself. Just being with a capital B plus, incandescent. Present awareness with a capital A plus. See? Seeing is free. See through all dream like illusory, momentary experiences, outer and inner phenomena and numina. Let go. Let be. Let come and go. That's the secret. Let be. Imho. Wondrous. Miraculous. Yes. Thank you. Love you. Way to go. Path the seekers. Everything open, decontracted, relaxed. Make a deep dive beyond in or out. Just settling, dissolving, connecting at the same time like a raindrop in the sea. Sea of awareness, sea of being, sea of seeing. With a great C plus for complete. The natural ray completeness. Excellent. I love it.
Smile a little and relax, friends. The late, great Master Thich Nhat Hanh said, Smiling yoga relaxes every bone in your body. How silly.
meditation is over, you can just relax and just be as you are. See how that is. Notice what comes up. Stop trying to control your mind or meditate. Just notice relaxation and attention is the essence, as Lama Roger Wolf likes to say. I usually say intention and attention is the essence. Relaxation, of course, is so important. Resting, letting go, letting come and go, letting be, equanimity, non-attachment. What words can encompass it? But you can feel it. At ease. First we say tension, then at ease. That's from my military background. Perhaps in a previous life. In the utopian novel by the great consciousness explorer and scientist Aldous Huxley called Island, the protagonist has a minor bird in a cage and the minor bird can speak, but he only speaks the one word. And he calls it out at random times. Attention! Attention! Isn't that what it's about? Krishnamurti, the great world teacher who insisted he wasn't a teacher or a guru, Krishnamurti, in the last century, with his 20 or 30 books every page, saying the same thing, awareness, awareness only. Awareness, practice awareness, use your awareness, no need for scriptures, postures, mantras, prayers, not to mention statues, temples, mosques, synagogues, churches, awareness. It's a common theme. Awareness, lucid presence, empty, open luminosity, or clarity, lucidity, not just empty, not just the light, sunlight, but it has some fizz to it, some gnosis, something. Luminosity does just mean wattage to the eye optic nerve. It means clarity, lucidity. A bright mind doesn't have, it's not like a 40 or 60 or 100 watt bulb. It's measured in other ways, other metrics, including beyond metrics. Nilsha Kempo Rinpoche used to say the main difference between ordinary beings and enlightened ones was the scope of awareness, the depth and scope of awareness, since we're all the same nature, like water, H2O, in different states, could be ice, could be froth or bubbles, could be mist, whirlpools, undercurrents, waves, still H2O, salt water, etc. Snow, so many different kinds of mental phenomena or consciousness events, even in the unconscious, even when we're dreaming is mental phenomena, like dreams and other things, consciousness events, even when we're unconscious. So awareness is all. Awareness is healing. Awareness, aware of awareness. Non-compartmentalized, interconnected, into woven into being.
just being is hard to fabricate because we already are. So we call it just sitting in Japanese, shikantaza, zen, just sitting, not looking for enlightenment, just sitting, just being more deeply, not just sitting, just walking, just standing, just talking, just turning over in bed. There's a justness to it. Come back to ourselves, to oneness, to harmony, beyond the conflicts. It's a practice towards inner peace and outer harmony as well. Try many short moments throughout the day, moments of mindfulness. Say, ah, or look at the sky, or do something to start yourself back into a wakefulness rather than daydreaming, or forgetting, or chiching like the cicadas of rumination, perseverating thoughts in your mind. Nam Tops, we call it in Tibetan. Chains of discursive thinking. It's kind of like barbed wire chains of discursive thinking. Getting tangled up in it. Like Velcro. There's plenty of hooks. Why provide the rings? And latch on. Mommy, pray me home. Oh, money, pet me. Oh, oh, money, pet me home. Lift it up a little, Bodhisattvas. Oh, money, pet me home. Oh, money, pet me. Be a living Buddha, not a wooden Buddha, a stone Buddha. Don't be afraid to move. Oh, money, pet me home. Oh, money, pet me home. Oh, money, pet me home. Oh, money, pet me. May all beings be happy, content, fulfilled, at ease. Oh, money, pet me. Oh, oh, money, bad man. Oh, money, bad man. Oh, money, bad man. May all be free from harm, fear, anxiety, and stress. Oh, money, bad man. Oh, oh, money, bad man. Free from danger, free from oppression. Oh, money, bad man. Oh, money, bad man. Free from suppression, suppressing ourselves. Oh, money, bad man. Oh, oh, money, bad man. Oh, money, bad man. May all beings be awakened, liberated, and free. Oh, money, bad may home. Oh, money, bad may home. Compassion for all who suffer. Oh, money, bad may home. Oh, money, bad may. 
love, love unconditional, flowing freely, back and forth. Oh, my bad man. Oh, oh, my bad man. From the heart center radiating and energy absorbing it almost simultaneously. Oh, Mane Padme. Oh, Mane Padme. Pulsing, radiating like a pulsar star. Oh, Mane Padme. Oh, oh Mane Padme. Oh, Mane Padme. May all beings be healed and whole again. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme. May this earth itself be healed, rebalanced, restored. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme. May this be a century of dialogue, of peace and cooperation, rather than of war like last century. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, oh, Mani Padme. Oh, oh, Mani Padme. Oh, oh, Mani Padme. May we grow and glow together. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, oh, Mani Padme ho, oh mani padme ho, oh mani padme ho. Enjoying the innate great perfection, oh mani padme ho, how sweet it is, oh mani padme ho, oh mani padme ho. Oh, Mane Padme. Grateful to all motherly, grandmotherly, sentient beings. Oh, Mane Padme. Oh, oh, oh Mane Padme. Oh, oh, oh Mane Padme. Oh, oh Mane Padme. All who want to need the same as we do. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, simply pursuing it through different means and ways. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme. Love. Love unconditional divine home. Oh, Mani Padme. Jesus love, Buddha love. Oh, Mani Padme. Maternal love, oh, paternal love, oh, fraternal love. Oh, Mani Padme. From our hearts. Heart radiating like a warm golden sun. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, oh Mani Padme. Oh. Light rays illuminating all, touching all, embracing all, healing all, awakening all. Oh, Mani Padme. Reaching out to the ends of the universe. Mani Padme. In all kinds of beings, oh, Mani Padme, oh, 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 Mani Padme, oh, all endowed with the luminous Buddha nature, the seed of enlightenment, the precious and dispensable bodhicitta, oh, Mani Padme, oh,
melting gently, softly. Om Mani Padme. fortune, the virtues, and merits, and accomplishments of all, all together, one family, one mandala, one sangha. How can we fight for peace? It seems like a contradiction in terms, yet efforts must be made. How can we be peacemakers if we're not peaceful and in, in harmony, minimizing our inner self-conflicts and neurosis ourselves, not to mention selfishness? How can we love others? Cherish others, respect others if we don't love, respect, and cherish ourselves. And I'm not talking about egotism, I'm just talking about the dig basic dignity of human nature. The Dalai Lama calls it good heart. Trump Rinpoche called it basic sanity. It's not that far from us. We may feel far from it, but it's not far from us. Any questions or sharing, please, on this beautiful Sunday, day of rest, a day of spirit, free from most ordinary worldly preoccupations, a good day to reconsider or realign or apply our priorities, especially as we get older and maybe our priorities change. Don't miss the opportunity to recondition and eventually decondition to get out of our ruts, or at least look over the side and see what's out there. Any questions, please? I hope you'll consider coming to our residential retreat. 17th to 22nd March and overlooking beautiful Malibu, California, etc. Retreat Center. We've been there several times before for retreats. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's fragrant flowers and mountain views and ocean view. <clears throat> Next and last upcoming master class. And probably I'm offering a virtual day long sometime in the spring or summer. Who can remember? Oh, yes, virtual. There's also a virtual possibility for the retreat, residential retreat in Malibu. <clears throat> My five or six Dharma talk meditation sessions will be uh, available online. Sign up if you like. Participate. So, any questions or anything, please? Lama, uh, Gretel asks, could you explain deathless nirvana? Oh, God. Just a small question. Well, it's a, it's a good question. First of all, why did Buddha call it deathless if it, people say everything is impermanent and we don't believe it eternal? 
Well, I don't know. Maybe things are not as black and white as believe in God and eternal or not. Deathless nirvana. Nirvana, it's a Buddhist word. It's a deep word. It's an ancient Sanskrit word. Hard to define, yet easy to define as a full enlightenment. But what does that mean? The fullest unflowery, the fullest flowering and actualization of our human potential, as Abe Maslow might have called it. That still sounds a little psychological or theoretical, but anyway. Nirvana means enlightenment, freedom, liberation. Selfless love and wisdom. Um, Buddha is said to have attained Anatara Samyak Sambodhi. Bodhi means enlightenment. Buddha, Bodhi, Bodhi tree. The root of the word bud in English. Check it out from the Sans Indo Sanskrit language tree. Bud, to bloom, to blossom, as if from within, not to get a lightning bolt hit you from above or tap on the head. <clears throat> so it's the fullest blossoming or unfolding. So Anatara Samyak Sambodhi means unexcelled, perfect, complete, irreversible, unshakable enlightenment. Not just an epiphany, a breakthrough, a satori, an enlightenment experience. These days it seems easier to have an enlightenment experience than to stay there than to be enlightened. So there's a lot of things you can say about enlightenment. Enlightenment is the goal of all Buddhist paths, whether explicitly said or not. It's the goal of all the Buddhist traditions. Deathless may or may not mean eternal, but deathless, unborn and undying, we usually say is a better translation. But still... We have to confirm it for ourselves and go beyond translation. Even putting it into our own language is still a translation from the experience to the concept to be able to articulate it. In Tibetan Buddhism, it's said that enlightenment has five uh, salient characteristics. Zab, Shi, Trodrel, Osel, Dumache. Profound. Uh... Great peace, or peaceful, or harmony. Sapshi Chodra. Uh, uncomplex, or unelaborated, or like, I don't know, homogeneous, something like that. Sapshi Chodra. Osel. Radiant, luminous. Dumache. Uncompounded, not put together, not fabricated, therefore not subject to the laws of impermanence and change. Buddha mentioned there were two things when asked, as everybody said, everything is impermanent, and that's a great teaching of Buddha to help us lessen our attachment and recognize things as dreamlike, transient, impermanent, unreliable, and so in the long run and so on. Buddha said there are two things that are not impermanent, not subject to decay or impermanence, space and nirvana. So I thought that's interesting. So that relates to deathless or unborn or undying nirvana, the innate Buddha nature or the innate cosmic mind, God's mind, let's say, not human conceptual mind, um, heart mind in Chinese. So that's about nirvana. Nirvana means enlightenment, liberation, freedom from suffering, some call it the end of dukkha, the first noble truth, the end of dissatisfactoriness and pain and suffering. Deathlessness is a tricky term. You could uh, think about what I said, a cluster definition, and look it up and see what you could read about or find or ask further. Some old translators from, like the missionaries 
and Sanskritologists, European from the 17th and 18th century, 19th century, translated nirvana as extinction, the extinction of suffering, like a fire going out. That's a little one-sided. It's the end of dukkha, the end of dissatisfactoriness, the end of ignorance, and so on. But it's more positive. It has all those positive qualities of luminosity and great peace and not complicated and things like that. Deathless, even. That's hopeful. Annihilation. Uh, the end of sounds a little pessimistic or life denying, which Buddhism definitely is not. It's a really life affirming and life saving, and not just human life, but all life. Think about it. And if we're going to be a lot, you know, talk about it in modern times, in postmodern times, not just animals and insects, but the invisible creatures, the tiny creatures, the micro creatures you can see through microscopes and things. Um, and what about if we're going to go further? The live earth, not usually considered as sentient beings, but it seems there's Karelian photography. It shows the pain or some kind of expressions or energy, emot emotion, emotes from plants being plucked or flowers being cut. Look it up. I'm not talking about rocks, plants, growing things, living things. So it's a profound subject, the mystery. Life is a mystery, isn't it? Enlightenment may be the biggest mystery of all. Nirvana and heaven have been uh, compared to each other. I'm not sure they're the same, but we don't need to split hairs either. Whichever it is, whatever we're heading towards, let's go. <laughs> and let's usher in the kingdom right here. Not wait for somebody else to do it or for some messiah in the future. The Buddha of the future, the next Buddha and the thousand Buddhas of this uh, cosmic cycle, the Sasana, the fifth Buddha, our Buddha, Lord Buddha, Sakyamuni, Siddhartha was the fourth in this co bigger cosmology. The fifth Buddha is called Maitreya, loving kindness, compassion, the loving one. Let's usher in the love. Thich Nhat Hanh said, the Buddha coming in the future, Maitreya is the Sangha. Doesn't that bring it down to earth and back to us here and now? How beautiful is that? Not just the famous man theory of history. Like one savior. Yes, there is a famous man theory of history. Check it out. In other words, Mahatma Gandhi may have freed India from the British, but he just is the uh, head ornament on the great vehicle of the people in that movement of the time. Questions? Anything left over? Thank you, Lama. I think I think we're about out of time. But there's no mystery about the need of the Zochen Foundation for generous support from people like you. So you'll find in the chat links to become a member or just to donate. And again, thank you, Lama, for your teaching. And we'll see everybody in two more weeks. Thank you, Mel. Everybody have a beautiful day in the spirit, in love, in dharma. Be well.